So I believe we have a window of opportunity today to uh, finally move to a level, to a different level uh, of our uh, security and defense uh, without uh, um, having big uh, strategic reflections, uh, also because I believe that part of them were already carried out during the uh, global strategy exercise uh, and in the years before, uh, because we're not inventing uh, much. Uh, I mean, you have been working on um, on um, most of the things we will be discussing with the ministers uh, in the years uh, um, that are behind us. Um, but I believe that today we have a window <coughs> of opportunity, not only with the defense ministers, but also uh, with the heads of state and government that not by chance, I believe, have indicated their will to decide uh, on an implementation plan uh, on security and defense during the European Council in December. So. Uh, on uh, Monday next week, um, we will be discussing with the foreign and defense ministers together um, an implementation plan that, uh, uh, in my view, but then this will be the result also common work we will do with the ministers, um, should define a new level of ambition that should uh, outline the goals that the European Union and the member states um, would like to achieve. Uh, including through the uh, CSDP uh, in order to implement uh, the global strategy in the fields of uh, security and defense. And uh, um, we propose three elements to this new level of ambition. The first one, responding to external conflicts and crises. If you look at the world, the area of instability and, and, uh, and conflicts is all around the European Union. Um, so we're living at the center of one of the most dangerous places uh, in the world. So this requires us to focus on the capacity to react and respond uh, to crises around us. Second, building the capacities of fragile partners, again, mainly around us, but uh, the concept of neighborhood here can go further beyond the traditional geographic neighborhood because I believe Africa is, for instance, a key investment uh, for us in terms of building capacities of partners. Three, protecting the Union and the citizens of the Union. Here I would like to immediately um, uh, clarify when we talk about protecting the Union and its citizens, we do not uh, uh, think uh, of uh, collective defense. We do not think of uh, uh, tasks that are for those uh, member states that are members of NATO, uh, a core uh, responsibility of the alliance or of national uh, competencies, but uh, my suggestion is that we uh, focus on the ways in which, as European Union, we can, through our external action, contribute to the protection of the Union and, uh, and, the, and the citizens, uh, including the work we are doing also with NATO uh, on cybersecurity, on uh, um, hybrid threats, uh, but also um, uh, the protection of the Union, I believe, uh, is something that we achieve also when we work on maritime security or um, the common goods, protection of common goods. Uh, so these three elements are what we suggest as uh, uh, the three building blocks of a new level of ambition. Um, as I said, um, clarifying what uh, this exercise is not aimed at. I've already said it's not aimed at equipping ourselves for collective defense. Uh, it's not aimed at duplicating or um, overlapping with what uh, uh, other partners are already doing, being it NATO or on another side, United Nations, which is a relevant partner for us in the field of peace and security. Uh, and especially when we look at uh, um, uh, developing capabilities, and I'll come to that in a moment, it is very clear, and I uh, believe I made it very clear um, with our friends and colleagues in NATO, uh, it is about uh, supporting member states in their development of a single set of forces that then can be used inside uh, the European Union or for EU uh, missions and operations, but it also can be used within the UN framework or uh, NATO framework or uh, on a national level or alliances uh, of different kinds. Together with the level of ambition, uh, we identify also, we propose also some elements, some concrete actions that are uh, necessary to implement the level of ambition in a credible way. Uh, to do this, we need, first of all, to identify the related capability development priorities. 
Second, deepen defense cooperation and deliver the required capabilities together. Three, adjust the EU structures for situational awareness, planning, and conduct of missions and operations, as well as the rapid response toolbox. Fourth, increase financial solidarity and flexibility and ensure um, a seamless range of funding options as part of an integrated approach. We know very well this is sometimes the obstacle we face when we look at concrete uh, steps to uh, set up uh, missions and operations. And finally, but not uh, at all um, uh, coming last, um, actively building uh, or taking forward CSDP partnerships. Um, this is actually the old uh, philosophy of the global strategy, building strong partnerships that allow us to work more efficiently in the world. Uh, deepening defense cooperation is crucial as we see it, and as I, as I said, this is also the result of a work we've done in the last two, three months, but I would say also in the last years uh, with member states. Uh, deepening defense cooperation is in particular crucial uh, for member states in this moment, not only because security uh, requirements uh, grow up, go up, but also because um, we come out of uh, uh, eight years of uh, a financial crisis in Europe, and not only in Europe, and the economies of scale uh, that are needed, especially when you look at uh, um, advanced defense technology uh, and the need to retain a full spectrum armed forces. Uh, is uh, something we can do more efficiently if we do it together. Uh, so we will look in particular to this. Um, at the same time, we know very well that, uh, as I said, decisions and uh, uh, ownership in this sector more than in any other sector lies in the hands of member states. This means decisions on member states' side to do uh, more, to do better, to do more together. Uh, to invest more in our common future. Here, the role of uh, uh, the European Defence Agency in assisting member states to develop the required capabilities is key, and I'm glad uh, that we're working very much together in this respect. Um, 